And greetings everyone, Fontaine here, VIPSoundLab.com, and we're back on Machine 2.6.9. And in this video, I'm basically just answering some questions that I got from some VIP members. And the question was in regards to stacking and layering MIDI. This video right here, we're going to concentrate and we're going to focus on Contact 5, because uh, that's what the member is asking. All right, so here's Contact 5. Let's pull it up. And in this particular video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Gentleman Piano and I'm also going to use um, the Scrabby Mark 1. The Scrabby Mark 1, I have it on MIDI Channel 2 and Contact uh, the Gentleman, we have that on MIDI Channel 1. So what happens is when I play MIDI from MIDI Channel 1, I'm going to get the Gentleman without the Scrabby. All right, so you see how I'm getting the gentleman and not the Scarby. And as you can see right here, when I tap on the keys, I'm not getting anything. So you want to stack those instruments up. This is an easy way. I'll put the Scarby Mark One on MIDI Channel One, just as I did the the gentleman piano. And let me turn the volume up on that. I'll have the volume up on that. Turn it just a little bit. Ballad is probably one of my favorite instruments on the Scrabby Mark 1. I love the sound of that. It's very, uh, very rich, very lavish sound. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, stack and lay these instruments by putting them on the same MIDI channel. Now, again, for people who are more, more professional, this is something that's, you know, pretty much um, very, very simple for you, very key for you. But for someone who's new and a novice, this is something that they're exploring. So let's be patient with the people who are new and let's, you know, catch them up. So now what happens is they're both on the same MIDI channel. So now we have to blend the sounds together to mix the sounds together. Because what's going to happen is these instruments are two completely different engines. The Scrabby Mark I, the tone of this particular instrument, it, it might could drown the piano out. So that's where you're going to have to get in and tweak it out. See, like this, this is completely just the piano. This is the the gentleman triggering by itself. So we want to blend those two together to get our own sound. And the reason why I chose these two, because the harmonics in these two particular instruments, they blend together well, which is why I'm choosing these like this. You know, of course you would choose something a little bit different. Okay, so that's how we blend those two together. And once we have them set, um, you know, you can go in there and add them to your drums. Like on this, I have something from my Boom Bap City kit, which is a drum loop. So it's just like a basic. Uh, so if you want to freak it. it.
you know what I'm saying? So you can get in there and get different blends and textures. You don't just freak it out. You know, you can get to like other areas. I'm not sure the camera is going to be able to catch me hitting this key down here, but you know, you can still blend these instruments together. We could try to add a beat to that as well. And in this video, I'm answering questions from another VIP member. They were wanting to know how to stack and layer MIDI from different groups. So this could be very handy when you have, let's say, in this particular situation, I have contact five on group B. So if I go under my plugin instance, you see I have contact five here on first sound. On group C, I have the Waves Codex here on sound one. So what if I wanted to trigger uh, this instrument and on group C and group B at the same time while simultaneously recording the MIDI notes? So this will give you the ability to double time things. Uh, uh, that might be one way to explain it, if you will. You can go ahead and get your work done from two different separate groups at the same time. So this workflow for some may be key. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at that. So what I did was to get it set up under contact five under your channel properties icon here. Okay. Under sound, under input, you go to MIDI. Here's your source, all channels for this particular situation. Under the source, you see, I have USB Axiom 61 port one checked. Okay. So go ahead and do that now. All right. Now that you got that set up, uh, under the other instrument, which is codex, you repeat the same steps. Under your channel properties, you go into input, sound, again, the source, USB Axiom 61. All. I'm not really sure, you know, what, what type of keyboard that you have. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just tap on the keys to show the theory that this will work correctly. As you can see, both groups, uh, the level indicators are triggering off. And again, to prove this theory, I will lower the volume on contact five. As you see, we're getting a signal here because the MIDI is triggering. You see the MIDI key hitting here, but you're not getting levels here because I have this turned down. I'll turn contact five up. I will lower group C, which is the codex. I will turn the codex down. As you can see, we're getting contact five MIDI here. 
MIDI's triggering on the codex group here. Again, the MIDI's triggering, but we're not getting levels on the group because I have the group turned down. Okay, so let me blend this in the way I want it. And I'm on the piano roll for both again. And just to prove the validity, we will uh, go ahead and we will click uh, record. Not trying to play anything, just showing that the MIDI will record. Let me take that off. Group. Let's go back to group B. Contact five. You see right there, there's the MIDI. The MIDI that's being uh, triggered. And we'll do that one more time. And we'll use something a lot more simpler. I think I overwrote, overwrote some of that. Let's go to, um, let's make this a simple one bar loop like this. What I think I'll do is I'll just do something simple like this right here. I just tapped it in a couple of times, a couple of MIDI notes. That's the codex. And there you see on the contact five, we're getting the same MIDI notes being triggered here. So if I press rewind on that. wipe off or rather I kill the volume on contact five you see the codex audio there if I mute that we'll bring up the contact five audio so as you can see the MIDI is being triggered on the piano roll and I think that's a great way for some producers that they will find that to be a very useful workflow all right, let me go back to the ideas mode. You can see it. So there's the idea mode and there's the MIDI notes. There's contact five MIDI and there is the codex uh, MIDI here. All right, so that's it. Pretty much um, the easy way to get your MIDI to stack and layer inside contact five. Now I'm on the Axiom 61. Now, of course, if you, you know, they have the new uh, uh, Native Instruments Complete Control uh, MK2s out now. So it was, which, you know, would probably make things a lot easier getting things set up. But, you know, this is just the basics uh, getting you started uh, to get you up and running. So, yeah, man, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions or concerns, hit me up. This is Fontaine. Be sure to visit our website, www.vipsoundlab.com, for machine tutorials on the new um, MK3. If you haven't seen our videos on that, make sure that you're checking those out because we are rocking the MK3, you know, with some tutorial videos on that. We're going to be dropping many more videos on that as well. So stay tuned. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.